module one with Stephen and in the previous topic, we saw that the geological aspect is one of the main factors that affect the design of a surface mine. But other characteristics and other aspects should be taken into account for the final configuration of the surface mine. Between them, we have to take into account of the safety, the economics, and the recovery of the material. In the next topics, we will see how all this could be achieved. But before that, let's have a look at which are the main physical elements that make up a surface mine. When we create an excavation with the purpose to mining a deposit, the excavation is called pit. The pit is a hole in the ground with a sloping side leading to the pit floor. The waste from the hole in the ground is placed on a dump. In a later stage, we will discuss what is a dump and uh, we will have a look at some images that clearly show which are the typical characteristics of a dump site. Surface mines are constructed in very different sizes and shapes. A surface mine is in continuous evolution, especially in relation to the extent of the deposit. The way in which a surface mine evolves and expands depends on several factors that include the geological and the deposit characteristics, the surface constraints, the project and operational constraints. In module one with Stephen, we saw that coal deposits occur in stratiform shapes and uh, several mineral deposits occur in pipe shapes or loads. Stratiform deposits, such as coal, are often mined using open cast configurations. In these images taken from the Sydney Basin in Australia, we can see that open cast pits can occupy extremely large areas. Disseminated deposits pipe deposits or loads are often mined in deep pits, which usually have conical forms. The pits are exposed to the atmosphere, and in this case, we talk about open pits. These images are from the largest open pit gold mine in Australia, the Femiston open pit, known as the Super Pit, located in Kalgoorlie, in Western Australia. The pit stretches 3.8 kilometers by 1.35 kilometers wide at the surface, and it goes down to a depth of 500 meters. Another example of a very large open pit is given by these images taken from the Highland Valley copper mine in central British Columbia, in Canada. In module one, we learn that for metalliferous surface mine, the slopes are referred as hanging wall and foot wall. The hanging wall is the underside of the wall rock overlying an ore body, and the foot wall is the top of the rock that underlies the ore body. The hanging wall must be removed to expose the body. Hence, the hanging wall rock becomes hanging wall waste. Once the inclined or body is removed, it exposes the foot wall, which is the rock below the ore body. If during the mining operation, some of the foot wall is also removed, then the waste produced is called foot wall waste. If the deposit is flat, or is dipping and not outcropping to the surface, but is located at a certain shallow depth from it, then the overburden becomes waste rock in the surface mining process. When we mine a deposit, it comes easy to think that it's not practical to excavate or to work with machineries and equipment on sloping surfaces. Let's imagine for a second to have to work with equipment and machineries on a slope like this. It is easier to think that this is not very practical for both machineries and personnel. 
instead, is much more practical to consider flat working surfaces. This is why pit slopes are created by removing the waste rock in a series of convenient bites, which excavate the rock in horizontal slices of limited height. This leads to the formation of benches that are short inclined slope separated by horizontal steps. The pit depth is the total depth of the pit from the lowest point on the floor to the top of the top bench. The waste material is removed from the pit and stored in an external waste dump. The amount of waste rock depends on our choice of the overall pit slope angle that we can define as the angle formed joining the toe of the lowest bench to the crest of the top bench. In order to have a safe, functional and economic slope design, three main Aspect should be taken into account. The overall slope angle, the configuration of benches, the ramps and interramps configuration or interramp angle. As we said before, the mining process works by the excavation of small bites that we define benches. The benches should have a face angle that allows to achieve a stable face and a stable crest, a sufficient width to mitigate the danger of rockfall from slope above and to provide access for working personnel and equipment, and a maximum height not exceeding the capabilities of the loading and excavation equipment. Ramps are continuous roads allowing vehicle access to the pit. They may spiral around the pit or be located on just one side of the pit, with switchbacks at each end. Ramps should accommodate two-way traffic, with grades limited to allow for a full truck to climb out of the pit. In order to have a good design, the number of tight curves and turns should be minimized. In general, ramps are sloping, instead benches are flat and horizontal. Ramps are also much wider than benches in order to accommodate the traffic of the trucks that are transporting the materials. A succession of benches between two access ramps is defined as inter-ramps slope. In this image from the Connecticut, Utah copper mine in Salt Lake Valley, we can clearly identify benches and ramps. The mine is the largest man-made excavation on Earth. In this case, ramps spiral around a pit. As you can see in this sketch, is the overall configuration of benches, ramps and inter-ramp slopes, which ultimately determine the overall pit angle. In the next topic, we will see which are the main processes and models that should be taken into account in order to have a stable slope design.